There's an awful lot to ask uh, John Caldwell, so I'm very glad that he's here. Businessman, former Conservative donor as well. John, very good morning to you. Yes, good morning, Mike. Nice, nice of you to join us. We'll get on to that uh, risk-averse uh, problem in Britain in a little while, because I'd, I'd value your opinion on that. Let's talk a bit about why, though, you've decided that Keir Starmer uh, is the man you want to back for this election, because there's an awful lot of questions in the papers every day about tax, about you know what he, what he concerns uh, himself with in terms of where he's going to get the money from, who he calls a working person, which is also interesting. Um, I think a lot of people will understand your despair at the Tories, but why are Labour going to be any different? Well, I looked at, in great depth at their manifesto, and I met with uh, Keir personally and with Rachel Reeves. And comparing the manifesto to my beliefs and principles, there's a very, very close marriage between the two. I mean, for instance, economic growth. We have to produce economic growth. Can Labour do it? I'm not sure about that. It's a challenge for any government, but I believe they've got a lot of the correct measures that they're going to put in place that is detail in their manifesto under kickstarting the economy. Um, other issues are make Britain clean energy. We have to be we have to be reliant on our own clean energy and not be held to ransom by the likes of Putin or any other dictator that wants to charge fortunes for oil and gas. And we have to do that not only for our own energy security, but to save the environment. And then there's other issues like developing the NHS, but developing it through GDP growth, because we just don't have a, clearly, we don't have a pot of money that we can just pour into these issues. We have to create wealth, GDP growth, and therefore government income without rising taxes. Now, will, will Labour measure up in every way to my hopes? Almost certainly not. No government ever is going to. But... I do think it's the closest fit to my beliefs as a capitalist with a part that wishes the poorer people to Britain, Britain to be looked after. Yeah, because I think you would say that, um, and you have said this in, in another interview I read in the, in the Times, that, you know, capitalism can be uh, the thing that helps those who are less fortunate. And that is what I believe as well, actually, because at the end of the day, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with taxing people as long as the money that you tax those people on actually goes to the people that need it. And we've got a massive problem in this country with the benefits culture. Uh, I'm sure you'd agree. There's an awful lot of people, 9.4 million people now, economically inactive. I haven't really seen much from Labour about what they're going to do about that no you know there's there's a there's a lot of hard-hitting things that need to be done in the uk that labor may not do um i think I, I think if i look at all the positive things they are really in line with my hopes and expectations if i look at the hard and bolder things i'm not sure labor will do those things but a lot of my views are very very right wing in that respect and very thatcherite uh, from the thatcher days but I hope that my voice within the Labour Party, uh, whatever influence I can bring to bear, will help the Labour Party to address some of these issues in a bold way that is actually beneficial for Britain and beneficial for everybody from the wealthy down to the poorest members of society. Right. I mean, one of the most specific policies they've got is about putting VAT on private schools. And I don't think you agree with that because I think loads of us would, would say, one, the, uh, the, the private schools have uh, much more difficulty in running themselves and they have less pupils going in there and people can't afford to send their children there. That'll put a massive strain on the state system, which is already at breaking point. Uh, and it also won't help people who have children with special needs who are, who are also allowed and, and somehow able to get to private schools because they get bursaries and they get help from their local authorities. Yeah, absolutely right, Mike. And I, I, if I were within the Labour Party as a politician, I would have been fighting for that to be scrapped. Mm. Uh, I think it's a popular policy for Labour, potential Labour supporters. I think it will win them votes, but I'm not sure that it's financially the best thing for Britain. Initially, we'll raise a load of VAT that can go in to the uh, state schools. But I think that will put a lot of people... On the, on the fringes, who are only just barely affording, put them out of the private school education, putting even more pressure on the state. And I think new parents thinking of going into private education, it's another 20% cost on an already ex really expensive bill. And I think it's going to put a lot of people off. So in the long term, I'm not sure whether this is a net negative or mm. a net positive to the UK economy. Yeah. And therefore, 
I personally would not tinker with it and I'd leave that in place so that people are enjoying the consistency of their lives at the moment. Because looking at it from the outside, a lot of um, critics of, of Sir Keir Starmer say this is the real Keir Starmer. It's a sort of ideological decision. It doesn't make a lot of sense for the education system. It doesn't make a lot of sense for, for hard-working parents that he likes to talk about helping. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense indeed uh, on any level apart from as a kind of a class war level. And that's really what Keir Starmer is all about. He's all about making sure that people who he wants to support him can see what he is. And that is quite a left-wing individual yeah I, I don't really know about that i mean i i just uh rather than judge on history or rhetoric i judge on the manifesto and what 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 is being said and i just hope i mean it, put it this way if if one fraction of the manifesto comes to pass then i think labor will have done an excellent job and if the price for that is VAT on private schools, which I do disagree with. That's crystal clear I disagree with. But if that's one of the negative policies that I disagree with, then that to some extent is a small price to pay for getting everything else mm. on the right pathway. And yeah. um, you know, their, their, uh, their dedication to climate and to self-sufficiency on energy and looking after the environment is crystal clear and crystal stated. And that is one of my big things for the next 10, 20 years. But haven't they walked away, though, from that uh, uh, d sort of de definite commitment that they made, the 28 billion they were going to spend uh, on, you know, green energy? They're going to set up this green energy company, but nobody's very clear about how they're going to do it. And just to go back to a, a minute about what you said about not Thanks looking, point, not, 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 hang on, I'll, I'll let you come back to that in a minute. But just on the on the on the looking back at what Keir Starmer has done before, you know, my father used to say to me, if you want to judge what a man's going to do in the future, look at what he's done in the past and he spent a very long time yesterday on another radio station uh, trying not to answer the question whether he would have served under a Jeremy Corbyn prime ministership in a cabinet with him yeah well he was between a rock and a hard place there and it's not for me to really comment on that because I don't know what Kate Keir's inner views are on that but what I can say in life uh, you do change your views and if you don't change your views you're a bit stupid actually because you've got to change your views according to the circumstances and the latest information. I mean, look at me donating half a million pounds in 2019. I was really heavily challenged on mm. that last night on Newsnight. But, you know, th at the end of the day, that was the right decision at the time. I don't regret that decision. I regret the fact that it didn't actually produce a very good result. Mm. But the decision was absolutely right at the time. And I believe my decision now on all the latest information to support the Labour Party is absolutely right also. So, you know, it, you have to change with the times now. Are you going to give are you going to give Keir Starmer half a million quid as well? No, I'm not. I'm not 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 paying it. I not giving him <laughs> but, How much are you giving him? Nothing. Zero. OK. You know, what I've given him is my support. And I hope that I will have some degree of influence in the Labour Party to discuss my ideas for how to grow the UK economy. I've got some very bold, very, very cutting edge ideas that may or may, may not be acceptable to any political party, mm. but commercially are absolutely the right ideas to grow GDP in Britain, to bring scientific, technological and environmental jobs to the UK, to create a Silicon Valley of the UK, a bold, bold, party could follow those ideas and make Britain great over the next five to ten years. It's one of the reasons I actually hope that the Labour get a really massive majority because that will enable them to be bold with their plans and that, and that gives me more chance of influencing them in some of the ideas that I've got. Yeah. Do you worry about the uh, advent of, uh, of what might become the new Tory party, you know, because the Tory party presumably that you wanted to see win under Boris Johnson um, was a Tory party that was more on the right than, than where it sort of seems to currently be. And do I worry about what Labour? Well, do like, I worry about the Tory? Do you worry about the Tory party kind of disintegrating if there's a massive, massive uh, supermajority? That there, there isn't really any point in having a Tory party anymore. Well, I, I think there is a chance that the Tory party is going to uh, disintegrate, and I think that would be would would be extremely sad. And my hopes are that after this election, that the Tory party would rebirth itself like Labour did under Keir. 
and become a force to be reckoned with again in the future because we do need at least one strong competitive party with sensible principles that can push forward and hold the other party to account. So I, I, I think that's essential, and I really hope the Tories get their act together over the next few years. Yeah. Let me ask you about uh, Michael McClintock. I don't know if you know him. You may do. Chairman of Primark's own Associated British Food. He said uh, just uh, the other day that the UK economy is paying the price for becoming so risk averse in recent years uh, that nobody really wants to do anything. You know, people see risk taking, he says, as an outright bad thing. But risk is a good thing. Do you agree with him? Yeah, risk is a good thing, but I, it's all that risk reward balance. And I, I don't necessarily agree with him on that point, incidentally. But I, I think there's not enough done by government to encourage risk takers that, that, that could be for, for instance, one of my proposals to any government that comes in, and of course it's going to be Labour, but is that we set up a government wealth fund, a sovereign wealth fund, to co-invest alongside uh, alongside ideas that are really scientific, technological, and high job creators and high wage creators. And I believe that that can be done because if governments are investing and receive shares for that and receive future dividends for that, it's an investment, not a spend. But at the same time, I would encourage Keir to cut spending in the UK and to really take cost out of the state sector because the, pub the public sector is too, it's definitely too expensive with too many people in it. It's, got, it's too big, yeah. isn't it? It's got too big. And finally, just I know we, we're short on time, non-DOMs. You're not keen on Labour policy on non-DOMs either because you think that chasing people out of the country who have got money isn't a great thing. No, it, it, it's definitely not a great thing. But whether it would be commercially, the once again, it's the same argument for state schools, whether private schools, it would, whether it would be net positive for, for the income of the UK, I can't say. Initially, yes, there's going to be a money grab that comes from these non-DOMs that helps the UK Treasury out. But will that be the best for Britain? I suspect not. But if it were done along special tax breaks, alongside special tax breaks that encourage businesses to come to the UK from all over the world, then that would count not only counteract that, but way more than compensate. So losing a few rich people to places like Italy, Portugal, Monaco wouldn't be too devastating, providing we bring inward investment of massive businesses into the UK to create wealth and to create technology within the UK. So that's my balanced viewpoint, but I would not have done what's happened to non-DOMs, and I'm not even sure it's fair. Interesting. Uh, John, very good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for taking the time. John Caldwell, businessman, former Conservative donor, uh, now Labour supporter, but not Labour donor. He's not actually giving them any money. Uh, and there's some things that he doesn't like about what they're saying. Uh, but he's in despair about the Tories. I think a lot of people are, particularly Tories.